Everybody coming up this week on the Garage Shop Insider Podcast, brought to you by Labware, two-time NASCAR champion, Johnny Benson. It's really him. He's going to be on the show. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Garage Shop Insider. I'm your host, Tim Packman. This show is brought to you by Labwares Incorporated. Today, our guest is two-time NASCAR champion Johnny Benson, fan favorite, all-around good guy, good friend of mine, and glad to have him with us. Johnny, welcome to the Garage Shop Insider podcast. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to be here. It'll be a lot of fun. So we can go back, but what's Johnny Benson doing these days? Trying not to do a whole lot, <laughs> but um, got some acreage, so it seems like you're always doing something outside. And okay. Uh, cutting trees, cutting wood, and and then I mess around here in the shop a little bit, and you know repair some stuff for some people, do some welding, do some cages every once in a while, and start messing with a little wind chime stuff. We got all kinds of fun stuff we do here. So you're still helping? You're still building cars or parts or uh, for local racers around the country? No, I, I I've been, but um, actually I have since I've been about seven eight years old. But uh, about four years ago, I I shut that part down and. Now I'll still repair something if somebody has a problem and things of that nature. But now it's just mainly friends that are like, they grab a car and want to do these uh, 24 hour lemons thing, want cages built in it. So I, I mess with that type of stuff. And then uh, one of the local, huge place, but uh, plumbing, service plumbing, I build all the racks for their new trucks. So it's just small little things here and there. But you're still involved? Still involved a little okay. bit. Uh, let's go back. So you started you started working on cars when you were seven eight years old, and your dad raced. So your interest was kind of right there in the house with you right at the start. Yeah. Well, when I got about seven, when I was younger than that, I, I hated going to the races. I didn't really? want to go, and my sister loved to go. And we always joke because when I got in trouble, they made me go to the races. When my sister got in trouble, they wouldn't let her go. So it was just kind of funny that it, that worked out that way. But at about seven, six, seven, somewhere in there, I used to love to watch my dad run the machines weld and next thing you know he's teaching me how to weld and uh i did at pretty seven good years at old? seven at seven year welding okay yeah by the end of the day he's he started having me weld aluminum race seats he goes here try this and then at he seven. would help me and then by that day i started in the shop seven years old uh, what did your dad race what type of cars he run uh, all, all late models up in in berlin uh in michigan it's in actually martin michigan but um in, which is my home track also so um, he's a seven time champion there. He, he ran one cup race at MIS. Um, I kind of want to think it was like 78 or something like that. And he thought it was too boring. <laughs> so wait, wait, he ran, he a ran, cup, he ran one a, cup race, a cup race at Michigan international speedway. Yes. Thought it was boring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> and so. Let me get this straight. You didn't want to go to the races when you were a kid <laughs> and then you ended up becoming, got it. I know it makes sense, right? So they're, you know, and I did start in the dirt cars uh, locally because we build a lot of dirt cars at my dad's place. And we didn't have anybody in the, you know, the, the company racing them. So I started to do that. And of course my dad didn't like that. So you're and racing dirt cars? Racing dirt cars. At what age? Oh, I was old. I was uh, 18, 19. That's okay. when I, my first time I started racing. So, um, so at that point in time, I was, Considering going to asphalt, wasn't sure, had an opportunity to run a sprint car, and my dad told me that, yeah, you can do that, but you can't work here in the shop anymore, so I kind of weighed that out, thought maybe I better stick around. And so, of course, then I did the Outlaw Late Model stuff, did the ASA, and then worked my way up, but, and it's funny, when I was running Cop, and we were, he did an interview at, I think it was Teledag or something, and he was asking, or the, they were asking my dad about my career, and he goes, yeah, he wanted to drive a sprint car back when, it, you know, back in his early days. And he goes, had I known he was going to be running here on Talladega, I might have let him run a sprint car. <laughs> so I, I still do laugh about that. But uh, um, so he's, he's not a super big fan of the super speedways. Everything else is good. About. That's good. Well, it makes sense because there is a little level of danger there. There is a little bit. So when you, in your early days, so did you work for your dad? What were you doing for him through, all the, through the years? Um, worked in machine shop, of course, help weld and stuff like that. And then was just learning. Um, what they do to the race cars. And he built cars at that time too. So by the time I was about 12 going on 13, I built my first 
not my first car, the company for the company, a car for a customer, uh, from the ground up, body, the whole deal. At 13? At 13. And, okay. and then my dad let them borrow me to go down to Florida during speed week. So wait, I, wait, wait a minute, they let you, they, they borrow, you went with the they, car? Yeah, the, the, the people are gracious <laughs> and they says, hey, he says, uh, how about your kid come help us down the floor? My dad's like, yeah, okay. And I'm thinking, you're 13. Uh, what about school? <laughs> <You're> th- <laughs> That's the story about you're 13. You're yeah, 13. so it went down to no. what Daytona type of record, Speedway. What kind of a car was it? That you went it to was an outlaw dirt car. Okay, dirt car. All right. And or late model, late model dirt car, and uh, with Chris Patterson. So yeah, I was. Um, I spent two and a half weeks down in Florida, going from you know Tampa Bay to Ocala to Jacksonville to wherever we raced. 13. At, at 13. So that was awesome. So and you helped work on the cars. I did. So, I mean, did anybody in the other crews go, what's the kid doing over there? I did have one little problem there. What was the you know, when you're 13, you're yeah. not the, you're, you're, you know, pretty direct and whatever. Yeah, sure. So we get to Jacksonville Speedway. And we're, we're, there's probably eight cars there because it was pretty early in the morning. This guy working on a rear end over there, which my dad built, makes quick change rear ends. And he's trying to get the pinion out of it. And he's in there whacking the thing with a hammer. And I, I you know, I just walk over looking at wheel out and I, I go, oh, dude, hey, you ain't going to get it out doing that. He told me to blank <laughs> off, and I go, I, I walked away. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm down by Chris. Well, Chris Patterson, hey, he's a pretty well-known well name. He comes over to Chris. He goes, hey, I'm trying to get the pinion out of this rear end. I can't get it out, this and that, whatever. He says, can you come help me? <laughs> of course, he looks at me, and he goes, oh, I'd have him do it. <laughs> and of course, this point time, the guy, you know. <laughs> So I go down there and I do it. I put, we pull it out of there and All I right. change opinion, put the uh, uh, ring gear on it and do the lash. And he's like looking at me. He said, how do you know how to do this? I go, oh, my dad builds these. It's what we do. <laughs> and they kind of laughed. Then he did apologize for telling me to blank off. So, um, so that was that was kind of fun to walk, you know, in the garage area. Uh-huh. And at that point in time too, I I still believe I made the first aluminum race steering wheel at 13. Okay. I brought one to Florida for the guy. Uh, that I was with, we put it in a car. Well, they're gone off getting tires. Heat racers are starting. A guy walks by, he sees it, takes it out of the car, he looks around. I'm sitting on a trailer, but I'm 13, right? He don't care. He looks at it, looks around, walks off with it. Well, now he's about 20 steps away. Then Chris comes back and I go, that guy did, my dad's always told me when I grew up, never leave a trailer. Never leave so a trailer. I, so I don't. I says, that guy just stole a steering wheel. And he looks and he goes, what guy? You know, that guy there had whatever on his back. And he goes, oh, don't worry about that. It's Charlie Schwartz. So it'll be okay. <laughs> and he goes, puts a car, runs a heat race, comes back. He says, where'd you get that? Points at me. And he says, where'd you get this? I said, I made it. I made it. And he gives me a car and he goes, send me 30 of them. At 13 years old. Yeah. I go, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, when I get home from Florida, I told my dad, I look, I had to make 30 of these steering wheels for this guy. <laughs> he goes, okay. <laughs> so did your dad give you commission on this or did he? He had room and board. He gave you what? He gave me room and board. That's what it, he always referred worked? to all my work as room and board. So, <laughs> which so, is funny. So your early days, well, room and board. <clears throat> yeah. So at any time did you go on your dad's payroll? <clears throat> well, I, maybe when I started racing, okay. he helped, help obviously with the cars. Okay. <laughs> That's funny, room and board. That's awesome. And there's a lesson for you kids, room and board. Yeah. Uh, so then your career's going along and all of a sudden you're starting to, you're, you're, getting better and better in the car and you start winning and where was the first asphalt race you ran that's a good question oh. at berlin at berlin raceway i'm pretty sure it was okay. pretty confident because okay. <laughs> i tested there when i was 13. my dad let me drive his car and that didn't work out okay. i got going a little too fast he was running to the track i was running within a second and a half of him first time seriously at 13. except for guess what happens when you run that fast when you're 13 you wreck oh, <laughs> so you i do? spun out spun okay. out and Get one of those old tractor tire things and had to do some work and get that fixed. So that, that's that part of your room and board on the track, <laughs> right? Which is probably why I didn't race until I was 19. <laughs> so then in but 19, you started racing competitively. Started racing. Did you build your own car? Built my own car, ground up. Good. Um, ran dirt. Now I ran dirt for three years and I was so very fortunate. I, I won my third race that I ran at in uh, Thunderbird Speedway up in, uh, in Michigan, I think, close to Muskegon. And John Grega, who is like the man over at that track, and he worked for Port City Racing for a long time, uh, he's behind me, hit me for 40 laps. <laughs> just running. I, I mean, I was so mentally stressed after that race, so I got out. And he was the first one to come over and said, Good job. And I was like, Man, you beat on me the whole time. And he goes, Yeah, just seeing if I can rattle you, you know. 
And uh, in your thank, third race, thank God I I yeah. didn't. But um, and then so then so that I had the dirt stuff I did I did pretty good at, and then uh, then I started running asphalt. In Berlin was first place. Okay. And Berlin's had a huge history in your career. It has. It has been for the family. My dad had raced there, multi champion, but I only ran there four years. Um, points wise, and we won a championship, and then I uh, moved on to ASA. So when you were winning at Berlin and the other win, do you remember the feeling of those early wins? Those, the when you're coming out of turn four and you realize, hey, I'm going to be, I'm going to win this. It, you know, those are those are questions you get asked a lot, and it's funny because when you work with my dad, he's expect to win every race, which he was very very good at what he did and he won about every week so to me it was like that's what you're there for you're there to win you know he didn't drink he didn't party or nothing like that he'd take autographs for the kids this and that we go home so when I won it was like all right that's pretty cool but it was like it's expected to to that extent so it did take a little time for because it was just he won so much and preparation is the is the number one key. So he taught me that very well. So we ran really good. And uh, other than Berlin, I it, it took me two seasons. Berlin's one of the I'd say I've run at like a hundred and I used to keep track hundred and seventy some different tracks. And Berlin is still my top five hardest tracks. I'm calling really all cup track. I'm talking every track I've ever ran at. Berlin's my top five hardest track to run. And so it took me two years to win a feature. But once that day happened. And then I, it was, I won there a lot. So of all the tracks, Berlin, which you're associated more with any other track, that's, that was your toughest one? Your top five? My top, top five. five. Unbelievable. I'm people, short track stopping. People think you aced, okay. People but, probably uh, thought you aced that place all the time. I run good there, but it took me some time to figure it out. You know, following well, my dad, obviously, watching him, uh, Freddie Campbell, Bruce Vanderlaan, Butch Miller, and following all those guys around there, they're, they're very good too. <laughs> and, <laughs> It's just learning all those old tricks and uh, places, places demanding stuff. So the ASA, you start your career, you, you get the opportunity to elevate your, your I career? I did. Um, Troop Motorsports uh, called me. We used to build like all the rear ends and spindles for their company, which Butch Miller drove for. And well, when Butch moved to come down south to run in the Cup Series, um, I got asked to run the, <clears throat> the car, but he also hired Bobby Seneca at that time. And so we are team, teammates mm -hmm. in uh, ASA. We run pretty good. My first year we finished eighth in the points, uh, won a race and stuff. And then my second year we finished fourth in the points, won some races. And then they were gonna cut down to one team. Well, Bobby had just won a championship and we run fourth. So guess. And so this is an easy, you know, in, in uh, Leroy Troop is, I mean, he's amazing to, to do it. But he was like, didn't wanna have this conversation. Well, I knew where it was going. I go. It's fine. I know you, if you have to pick a driver, I'd pick, I'd pick <laughs> the champion. Yeah, I'd pick the champion too. I said, I have no problem with this. And then, uh, so we went on our own and, and then run second in points, actually tied it. <laughs> and then, uh, won it the following year in, and, and, uh, it was, so, you ran for yourself at that time. Is there, yeah, my, it was well through my dad and Port City racing and, uh, won a lot of races and, and ran well and was able to win the championship. We were, we were right there. And we pretty much tied it. There, there were, at that time, that's when the new car come out and they had appearance points and stuff. I got Doc some appearance points, would basically at the end of the year ended up costing me a championship. What, what, what were appearance points? Yeah, just different paint stuff, like they wanted certain areas and mm -hmm. I didn't know about it. And they tell me three weeks into it, well, we're taking points away from it. I said, well, that ain't good. <laughs> yeah. And of course we tied at the end of the year, Mike had more wins, so he won it. So it was, yeah, I mean, it was kind of a bittersweet thing, but we made sure we won it this next year. So as you're going through your ASA career, you're winning the points, now you got the championship. At any time, did you start looking beyond? Did you start looking like higher up the racing chain there? You know, I really didn't. And, it, and this just seems very weird, but um, you know, I run dirt. I did that for the company, but I love dirt. Dirt's, I would still go do it today if I, if I could, but, um, but then the asphalt thing made sense for the business aspect. And then I'd had that opportunity to go run ASA. Well, as I'm doing that, I ran a uh, Ernie Irvin's car down at MIS on my championship year with the ASA. 
and then Bill Baumgartner um, hired me full time to run the Bush thing. So it was just one of those steps that somebody asked me to do it, like what the ASA thing. Oh yeah, okay, I'll give it a shot. And at, and at <laughs> I'll the time, give, I was I'll give like, it a shot. I'll just win the I'm like, why am I doing this? I love the fifty lap races, the 35, 50 lap races. Like they're running three hundred. Why do I want to do this? Well, after I started understanding really more what um, what, what it was about, um, that intrigued me a lot more, and that. So that from that point, trying to move up into the Bush series wasn't a goal because I was still working for my dad at the business. But when the opportunity comes, I I did take that. I did take and go, um, go do that. I had two great opportunities. One to go do the Bush race. I had an opportunity to run or test an Indy car at Milwaukee during during that year yeah. and. I couldn't go to the test oh. in Milwaukee. To, I, although it would be fun, I don't know if I'd ever want to race one, but I, um, it would have been a great test. I think sure. that would have been a lot of fun. So the Ernie Irvin, how did that, how did that come about? Did he call you or is it just? It started off, and everybody tells these stories, in, uh, especially with Earnhardt. So Earnhardt called the shop because Childress has come to a, a couple of ASA races. Right. Earnhardt called the shop. My mom told me it was him. I didn't believe her. Same, you know, you've Dale heard it. Yeah, yeah you, sure. I'm sure you've heard this. And or I've heard people talk about <laughs> yeah. that. And he called again. I thought, okay, better take that call. <laughs> and he goes, hey, you want to run my, uh, I think at the time, his bush car at Dover. He goes, I'll get my people on it. And I says, okay. <clears throat> GM Goodwrench was the, hey, the sponsor. Wait, real quick, when he said he'll get his people on it, and you were your people, right? I, I was my my, I'm looking at my people, too. Other than my mind, I turned the phone. <laughs> and, uh, Perfect. <laughs> you know, but back then, we didn't do the PR stuff. I mean, it wasn't like that. So, um, so anyways, GoodWrench wouldn't allow Dale to not run the race. So oh, contractually because the sponsorship yes. got it. He didn't want to run it because it was hot week. You know, just, you know the deal. And so between him, Ernie Irvin, and Chevrolet... Um, helped me out to basically get this ride with Ernie, and that was my first race at MIS. That's that's three big names right there. Yeah, yeah. And how, how, I mean, for you, that'd be like, okay, Dale Earnhardt called me today, and I'm sure you had yeah, to tell is. people like, I got a call from Dale Earnhardt, and like, yeah, whatever, Johnny. That's I didn't fair. tell anybody. I was really? like, I couldn't believe it. Oh. You know, <laughs> I was like, all right, <laughs> okay, let's, I mean. let's see how this happens. <laughs> You know, and uh, right. so it, it, it was it was comical. It's a great story, but I've heard other people say that yeah. they, you know, that oh, Earnhardt called and and you were like, Man, it really, you know, well that was the same way. He doesn't say Dale. He just he, Earnhardt. Was, he goes Benson Earnhardt. It's like that. That's what you heard <laughs> sure. on the phone. And it was. Uh, I wonder how many times if he was, we could ask him how many people hung up on you because there's you, there's Steve Park, there's Ron Hornaday, there's a bunch of others. Because who believes they, he calls up? Yeah, so, well, then you have your people call. Then your people so, yeah, call, right. yeah, just do the first So Dale call. did make the first sure. call, two calls, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and first, then he, the then he two. got his people on it. <laughs> Perfect. Which is weird, because you would think it'd be the other way around. But So do you think it was awesome that your home state, um, you know, you grew up right there, that the pride of Michigan is all of a sudden you're making your first NASCAR start at Michigan International Speedway? That part was pretty cool, if you look at all the things that was a really uh, cool thing didn't last long. What but, happened? Um, well, somebody may or may not got into me coming off turn two on the second lap, and second lap I went about five and a half flips down a back stretch in the infield. So, and then Ernie's on the radio, and he says, "Come to get over to the pits. I'll jump out and let him run." And I says, "You know, I had enough for today." <laughs> <laughs> you know, and oh. that weekend was tough anyway. Because <laughs> right. we get there, I've never been in a bush car. I mean, we go into the straight race. There's no testing. There was no nothing. Uh, Ernie and Kim, I think, at that time, having their first baby. He's not at the racetrack. Great. So, and my car's late. So here I'm going, oh, this is going to work out great. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, so anyways, we get uh, into, into practice, and that went good. We qualified pretty good. And we're just in the, in the field there and got tapped coming off, too, and spun out and and it, it was actually Dale and Ernie that actually even got me to run at Michigan because they don't let you run on the big tracks. Sure. And Dale's like, well, no, that'll be fine. It's his home track. You won't get upside down and all this <laughs> stuff. And, of course, I go upside down five and a half times. At, well, you left your mark. <laughs> I'd, uh, and then, uh, then I had an opportunity to go down to run Charlotte. And everybody, all the crews were mad because that's when the cow flaps come out. 
Yes. And everybody had to put them in there because of, well, it was because of Ernie's almost going over at Talladega and then me going over. So it was tied in with Ernie too. Everybody there was just giving me crap. You, because it was like your fault. Because I was the one that went over backwards. So we got to put all this stuff on the car. It's a safety measure. Oh, it is. No, yeah. great. They're but awesome. they, the mechanics had to do all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> all right, so you go to Charlotte, and who'd you run for there? Uh, that was with Bill Baumgardner at this point in time. Ernie was running their car, and Ernie says, man, you got to put this kid in the car. And I, I ran a couple of races. <clears throat> in 93, I think I ran three races. And then uh, Bill Baumgardner hired me full-time to come down and run, run the Bush Series, which at this point in time, I'm 30 years old. So I was this gonna is, ask you, 30 years old, starting as in a Bush career. About the fourth race, Bill struck me, he said, how old are you? I said, 30, and he goes, what? <laughs> he didn't know how old I you were I swear before. to God, he, he said. He, he didn't know how old you were? He didn't know how old he was, <laughs> and I swear to God, he looked at me and says, I didn't know when you were that old, I wouldn't hired you. Thank you, appreciate that. And I says, thank God I got four races in. <laughs> <laughs> and you were doing, you, and you left yeah. a mark in there. And uh, <laughs> you know, we run six in a point. Mm -hmm. um, Run Rookie of the Year against Dennis Setzer, which I love. He's he's such a great guy, and and um, and then following year won the championship. So I mean, it, it worked out well. So the, your first your first uh, what's Bush win Xfinity, whatever you want to call it, um, was where? Uh, it's Hickory. Okay. Hickory Speedway. What was it like winning that one? That was cool. Because that was um, car was good. Um, great battle with um, Chad Little and things of that nature so we won that which was which was pretty amazing and then this uh hold on i got back up go ahead hickory was not my first one dover is my first one and i think uh when i won hickory during my championship year and so dover was actually my first one okay and um that was a tough race i don't know why i would have thought any yeah. different than why i would have thought the other because i won that tracks demanding um, we were running up front with Harry Gant and a guy that I watch a lot. I, you know, I love the way he raced. I like the way how he is, but so we got that going on. Caution comes out, NASCAR picks up or the pace car picked up the wrong car. So they said we were lapped down. And of course we were both all arguing because we were leading. And, and I think we pitted, I think everybody was in their pit thing. And anyway, so they. Said we were lapped down, so we started on the inside the front row, and we went by the leader and come all the way around and finished first and second in that race. So it was, that was, uh, but every time I look in the mirror and you see Harry Gant behind you, I mean, doesn't matter who they are, but when it's a, like, Harry Gant, it's a big deal for me. And I, re that, I remembered my first win on the dirt based off that guy beating on my bumper for 40 laps out of a 50 lap race. And it, that stuck in my head, and I just don't make a mistake. And I just didn't make any mistakes in one. So you were probably one of the first, not one of the first, but one of the first few of the northern drivers that come down south. Did you find your acceptance <clears throat> was uh, tough to do, or did you find that it was easy to go along with your fellow drivers, or was it kind of a struggle? There, were, there was probably a little bit of both, but I think in, in general, it was a little, I think, easier for me at that point in time, of course, you know, Butch Miller, Sprague, Jack Sprague was down here, things of that nature. So there was some people down there, but I was also 30. I think if I was a kid, like today, coming down here at 18, 20, whatever it is, at that time, would have been a lot harder. I think that uh, because of my ASA experience and, and things of that nature, I think it was accepted and a little bit easier. Um, so I didn't have that big of a an issue. I mean, not any different than I would today. I mean, some people still <laughs> yeah. harass you for being from Michigan, but, uh, um, but it, it, it was, it, the transition was, was nice. It was all right. So you talked about looking in the mirror and seeing Gant. What was it like for you to be on the track knowing that Earnhardt was out there and all these guys that you'd watched on TV and, and I don't say emulated, but looked up to for what they've done. All of a sudden you're out there racing with them. There, I mean, you have that, but I think most people that, in their career, well, because mine started late, right. I was racing against guys that my dad was racing against, and I'd already admired them, and I learned a lot from them. So when I started doing it down here, I looked at it as an opportunity to learn something from them on the right. racetrack. So that was that's kind of how I viewed that. It wasn't, uh, and then like I say, other than that moment with with Harry Gant, which is stressful, you know, for a rookie to have a, a guy like that behind you for 
majority of the race. I mean, the two of us dominated the race. And, and I think uh, Jason Keller led a lot there that day too. But, um, you know, so that you just learn from that. And then after that, I says, well, it can't get that much harder with somebody behind you like that. And so I was, I was able to, to, to deal with that. But it was awesome to, to race, you know, get your Mark Barnes, Rusty Wallace, and Tony Stewart's and all that. I mean, it, I picked a good era to come down and, and run through. Uh, that went in Dover, what, did Harry say something to you after the race? Nope. Nothing. He's, if I had to go rip a house, I would laugh. He's still ripping <laughs> I just, a house. I don't even want to say something. He loves that. Right. And, uh, so, no, he just is not. It, well, then again, the interview, he said he ran a good race. Da, 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 da. And, and, uh, but I, I personally talked to him a couple times, and we did an autograph session together at uh, Darlington. I think, I think I was in cup at that point in time. So we did chat about the All race right. then. That's good. I'm just curious how it goes when, you know, the veteran gets beat by the rookie. I'm sure you weren't happy. Okay, exactly. <laughs> Would you be? Were you in your days? Yeah. Oh, and, and, you know what? A racer second is, I mean, you, you deal with the moment. And you, you, you know, you, that's where you ended up, right? So it's okay, but it's not. Right. <laughs> you still go. So when you win the championship um, for the Xfinity Series, you, that's like the epitome of what you, in that series, what did that, what did that kind of do for you? Like, how did you remember how you, like when you went back home, how people were and how it was to be a NASCAR champion? I, I mean, it, it is pretty amazing. The fans are, are great. I mean, I had a great fan base in Michigan because of my dad to start with. And then we, of course, ran good. Well, ASA always run Berlin, a couple races a year. So I was there, but even when I was running the Bush series, I always went home and ran the ASA races at Berlin. And so there's, you know, so I always saw the people in Grand Rapids, which is, which is pretty cool. But at those times where you come back and race at Berlin while you're leading the points in the Bush series was, was, you know, pretty interesting because people, you know, are, you know, good luck tonight, but more good luck down there, you know, and, uh, and so that's always a nice feeling. But after winning in, in um, still coming back and running at Berlin is, um, it's always been pretty special. Did you take a t-shirt trailer up there with you when you went? No, my sister sold some stuff, but, uh, <laughs> Just um, but no trailers. Okay. So then you go into cup. How did the first cup opportunity come about? It was um, Chuck Ryder uh, asked me if I was interested in in coming, you know, to run there. So and what, that was number th the thirty Pennzoil. That, that was a thirty Pennzoil car, and this was going into nineteen ninety six. Was my rookie year, and so we had a couple conversations. And of course, at that point in time, I was like, well, what's Michael doing? You know, because I've always been pretty straightforward on that. And, <clears throat> and Chuck said that, well, he was leaving. He was going to do something else. So I'm like, okay, perfect. When I get to track we're at Talladega, of course, you know, stuff gets around. Here right. comes Michael. Comes down to me. And of course, you know, Michael's what, 6'4". Okay. And he looks at me and he says, you've been talking to Chuck Ryder? I go, yeah. And, and a look on his face, I think he expected me to say no. And I go, yeah? And he goes, oh. And I go, well, he said you were leaving. And he goes, oh. <laughs> and then he's like. So we just found out that he was yeah, leaving from you. Yeah, and he goes, okay, good to know this and that. And then, you know, we've been friends ever since. But, right. Um, well, then, obviously, I figured out that that yeah. wasn't the case. And, then, and I told him that I, as I'm finding this out. I told him, I go, look, if that's the case, I don't, I, I, I'll go do something else. And he goes, oh, no, don't worry about it. So, okay. I mean, a good lesson to, to go through. But <laughs> you just kind of believe does. what people tell you. So. Sure. <laughs> oh, that ought to be, I wish I could have seen that conversation, the look on his face. It was kind of funny. The crew <laughs> members are like, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got a new, are you the new guy? Be nice to him. Okay. All right, so the Cup, cup career starts, and mm -hmm. you started with Chuck Ryder. Yeah, that went well. Um, you know, your rookie year, you're always going to have obvious things. But we did have an opportunity to win the Brickyard race which we, at the time, had dominated the race. And uh, we made a couple of mistakes here and there. And then our, our last stop didn't go as well as we all liked. And the, the, the stop was off just a little bit, and I stalled the car. So before we had come in leading the race, we had come out third or fourth. But uh, I think Ernie Irvin and Dale Jarrett at that time were the, the two that I was dealing with. We were able to get back by him, lead race, while the last stop, I come out 18th, not third or fourth. And so I think we still made it up to like sixth or seventh, um, but we didn't get the win. And 
you know, that's, that's part of one of those things that you just, you just go, that got, just kind of got away from us a little bit, right. <laughs> but, um, but it was still a great run. I was, um, I was still happy. I, you know, at that point in time at running at that track and, and seeing it the whole, the whole weekend is just, was just amazing. So I was, I was happy and a little bigger content. than Berlin. A little bit bigger, a <laughs> little bit bigger. So a as, as a driver, like, can I know as I've gone to these tracks the first time, like, you know, holy crap, I'm at Daytona, I'm at Indian. So did you have those moments where you like took in the fact of what you were doing? I, I mean, I know you're there to drive and that's your focus, but as a human being, you have to stop for a moment and go, this is Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yeah, and, and you have that with Daytona too. You know, that was, because uh, I went to Daytona obviously before the break here, but um, I've gone down there as a kid and and used to go to the 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 twin races and or the um was it the 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 shootout watch qualifying watch the twins stay and watch the bush race and then get in the car go home and hopefully get home in time to watch the cup race so i've never been at a cup race at daytona until the year that i ran it in 96. so first time at daytona for a cup race i was in it which is awesome. <laughs> and what was what team was that with? That was for Chuck Ryder. Okay. Now my Th- that Bush Series little... owner at the time right. had a suite there, and he's he says, "Hey, you want to come up and watch 500 back in our championship year with the Bush Series?" And I said, "No, I've gone all these years. I might as well just wait." <laughs> and then you finally get it, and you're and in. I finally the... get it, and it was in it. it was and there awesome. was one one year you were really close to pulling that one off. Yeah, the, it, um, I'm gonna guess 2000. I know we went to Tyler Jet, no sponsor. Um, we had a good, you know, we had Hendrick engines and stuff like that. We, we, we ran great. You know, it was, um, it was good except for that last caution. That last caution. The last caution. <laughs> I know Michael Waltrip had, uh, was involved in that. And, uh, and of course we were doing it, that TV show there. And I told him, I said, you could have just laid on a track for a while, just something <laughs> to let it go. Finish under caution would have been great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, I think there was what, seven laps to go. Mm-hmm. And I was the only Pontiac up front four fords behind me i knew i was in trouble i mean and you could hear the crowd i remember the crowd was going crazy and you had it was a white car yep. and the, there was the dog yeah it was what was the sponsor like those at the time yep. and, and there was a dog yeah. on there and it was just it was like a white car like, yeah all white car it was a street stock almost had looked to it you know the paint scheme and you're out there leading and you're about to win this thing and then that last caution and people were pulling for you because it was like this wasn't supposed to happen no i know and it was uh you know, you look back and say, man, if the caution wouldn't have came out, we had a great opportunity. And now I don't know how that would have played out. We don't know that. But um, I was able to stay ahead of them on two tires for that whole time. And, and the car was just awesome. And it just said, the caution just got us. And when we got the green come off too, I got passed. Yep. Four Ford just pushing on in. Got bumped a little bit out of the way, and I, I remember Earnhardt coming over, man, I had to turn left and run him in the lake. And I was like, yeah, but I've been in the lake too. That's so all I was doing was trying to save the car from out wrecking. And uh, then he just kind of chuckled. So as, as a driver, you're leading the Daytona 500. What's that, what's that like sitting in that car? You're going, let's just call it 195 miles an hour. And you, you're, you've got to be like, okay, I got this lap. I'm leading the Daytona 500. There, you know, it's a great place to be. Yeah. And you would think that you can enjoy that moment, <laughs> right? But you're looking in the mirror. Sure, you're not even looking where you're going. I, that that twenty laps or whatever that we were leaving there. I don't I don't recall even looking out the front of the window. <laughs> you, you're just looking in the mirror the whole time. You just kind of look and keep between the walls, and you're you just got to watch what they're doing. You hear people talk about that all the time. Yeah. And when we talk about this race, I cannot view what I saw out of the front window because I was always looking in the sure. mirror. And uh, I know they talk about that today when. Uh, especially with all the cool cameras I got now. You sit there and you watch them, you're just, they're like this, and Look that's true. You're, you're guessing where you're going to a certain extent. So we talked you about know. the 500, the, the Brickyard 400 that you're out front. Do you like, do you, do you get over it quickly or is it something you just kind of think about for a day or two? How, how, does, how, do, you, how do you handle those, those moments I, that I, you get away? I'm over them pretty quick unless they come up in interviews. <laughs> you know, <You're> welcome. <laughs> that's when you're going to go back and no, go, I'm just curious, but, man, you yeah. know, and... Uh, no, you have to. You have to move on. You have to, you know, you hear a lot of sports people will say that. Like if you get hurt or you got something or, or baseball, a guy tries to bean you with a ball, you know, what do you do next? Well, you better forget about it and do your job. And, that, and that's, that's pretty much how I view it. We need a favor from all of you. We appreciate you watching. 
We need you to do one little thing. Hit that subscribe button, become part of our team. And Johnny Benson's subscriber, so he says, just hit the button. It doesn't take that long. Subscribe, hit the bells, follow. That's it, listen to what Johnny says. Subscribe, Garage Shop Insider. Thank you.